Imagine a war so immense, so far-reaching, that it transcends time and space. A conflict not just of nations, but of cosmic proportions. We're not talking about a mere earthly battle. This warfare is spiritual, an unseen combat that rages around us, a concept deeply rooted in biblical teachings. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Ephesians, chapter 6, verse 12, writes, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. This verse introduces us to the concept of spiritual warfare, a battle that doesn't take place on a physical battlefield, but in the spiritual realm, unseen by the human eye. Yet, its influence is evident in world events, shaping the course of history, affecting nations and changing lives. It's an ongoing struggle between good and evil, between the divine and the demonic. And the Philippines, a nation with a rich and complex history, is no exception. The spiritual warfare mentioned in the Bible has left its mark on this archipelago, influencing its cultural, political and religious landscape. Theologians and historians have explored this unseen battle's impact on the Philippines. Renowned Filipino historian Ambeth Ocampo has stated, The spiritual dimension of our history is often overlooked, yet it is a vital part of our national identity. Similarly, biblical scholar Dr. Michael Heiser argues, Understanding spiritual warfare is crucial to comprehend the spiritual forces that have shaped historical events. These insights suggest that the unseen battle has had far-reaching effects, not only on an individual level, but also on the collective history of nations. So let's peel back the layers of history and delve into the unseen realm. Let's explore the spiritual warfare that has influenced the course of the Philippines, a nation shaped by faith, resilience, and an unwavering spirit. This war, invisible to our eyes, has shaped the Philippines in ways you may never have considered. The Philippines, with its rich and tumultuous history, has been a stage for this unseen warfare. Picture this, a vibrant archipelago, teeming with life and culture, yet marked by strife and struggle. The Philippines, a nation with a history as deep as the Pacific, has been a stage for this unseen warfare. An arena where battles beyond the physical have been fought, Let's venture back in time to the Spanish colonial period, a time of significant transformation. Spain's 300-year rule was not merely an era of conquest and colonization, but a spiritual battle. The introduction of Catholicism, as written in the historical documents, was a clash between the old and the new, the native and the foreign. This was a manifestation of the spiritual conflict at play. Key figures of the era, like the revered José Rizal, echoed this sentiment. In his writings, he often alluded to the duality of the physical and spiritual battles. His words resonate with the biblical passage Ephesians 6.12. For our struggle is not against flesh and blood, but against the rulers, against the authorities, against the powers of this dark world, and against the spiritual forces of evil in the heavenly realms. Fast forward to World War II, where the Philippines became a bloody theatre of war. Yet beneath the surface of this global conflict, another war was waged, a spiritual one. The resilience and faith of the Filipino people during this trying time mirrored the struggle of Job, as told in the Bible. Their unwavering faith amidst adversity was a testament to the spiritual warfare fought and won. Even in recent times, the martial law era, the people power revolution, and the ongoing battles against corruption and poverty, they all embody this unseen warfare. Each event, a manifestation of the spiritual conflict that rages on. Indeed, the Philippines has been a theatre of war, not just in the physical, but in the spiritual realm. But how does the Bible unfold this warfare? How does prophecy intertwine with the history of the Philippines? Let's delve into this fascinating intersection of faith and history. The Bible, a book rich in prophecy, has passages that seem to echo the tumultuous history of the Philippines. We're not talking about vague, one-size-fits-all predictions here, but uncannily specific prophecies that align with significant events in the country's past. Consider this. In the book of Isaiah, chapter 43, the prophet speaks of a people called from the ends of the earth. 
Bible scholars like Dr. James Hamilton propose that this could refer to the Philippines, a nation literally at the Earth's eastern edge. Intriguing, isn't it? Then there's the prophecy in the book of Jeremiah, chapter 1, verse 14, which speaks of disaster from the north. Historians such as Maria Lourdes Diaz point out that this could be a reference to the Spanish colonization, which began with an expedition from Mexico, north of the Philippines. More compelling still is the prophecy in Daniel chapter 11, where it's written, ships of the south shall attack him. Could this be a reference to the Battle of Manila Bay in 1898, where American warships from the south attacked and defeated the Spanish fleet? But it's not just about warfare. The Bible also speaks of liberation and hope. In Isaiah chapter 60, verse 11, it is written, Your gates will always stand open. They will never be shut day or night. Could this be the Philippines' transformation into a democratic nation, its gates open to all? These interpretations, of course, are not definitive. As with all prophecies, they require faith and discernment. They do, however, offer a fascinating perspective on how the Bible's ancient words can resonate with the experiences of a modern nation. The Bible, it appears, has more to say about the history of the Philippines than we might think. Yet amidst this cosmic conflict, there is hope. The Bible, a book of wisdom and ageless truths, offers a beacon of light in the depths of spiritual warfare. It assures us that victory is not only possible, but rather is guaranteed. The Apostle Paul, in his letter to the Romans, proclaims, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through him who loved us. Such a powerful statement, it's a declaration of victory, a promise of triumph, not by our might, but through the love of a divine entity who is greater than any adversary we face. Now, let's turn to the Gospel of John, where Jesus himself conveys a message of hope and assurance. He says, in this world, you will have trouble, but take heart, I have overcome the world. The world here symbolizes the battleground of life, filled with trials and tribulations. Yet in the midst of these struggles, we are reminded to take heart, to remain hopeful, for the battle has already been won. These verses, filled with hope and victory, resonate deeply with the resilience of the Filipino people. The Philippines, a nation graced by beauty and challenged by adversity, bears a history marked by battles and conquests. Yet, like the enduring promises of the Bible, the Filipino spirit remains unfazed. The people of the Philippines have faced invasions, natural disasters, political upheavals, and societal challenges. They've been at the mercy of forces much larger than themselves. Yet in every instance, they've shown a remarkable ability to endure, to rise, and to rebuild. They embody the essence of being more than conquerors. Their resilience is not a mere product of human strength or determination. It is the manifestation of a deeply ingrained faith, a testament to their belief in victory and hope amidst the battle. Just as the Bible assures believers of triumph over spiritual warfare, the history of the Philippines exemplifies the triumph of the human spirit over adversities. In the face of warfare, the Philippines, like the promises in the Bible, stands resilient and hopeful. The story is far from over, the revelation continues, and so does the warfare. In this ever-evolving world, spiritual warfare is not a relic of the past, but an ongoing struggle that resonates with the present day. The Philippines, steeped in history and faith, remains a key player in this unseen battle. Its strategic location, vibrant culture and resilient people make it a battleground where spiritual forces continue to clash. Yet this is not cause for despair but a call to hope and courage. For the Bible, a beacon of wisdom and revelation assures us that victory is on the horizon. In the book of Corinthians it is written, the weapons we fight with are not the weapons of the world. On the contrary, they have divine power to demolish strongholds. Indeed, the Filipino people have shown time and again how they can rise above trials, armed with faith as their shield and love as their sword. They have withstood natural disasters, political upheavals and social challenges, their spirit unbroken, their hope undimmed. They are the living testament of the Bible's promise of victory amidst warfare. In the heart of every Filipino there lies a warrior ready to face the unseen battles of life. Their resilience is not just a product of their history, but a manifestation of their faith. 
a faith that is deeply rooted in the teachings of the Bible, a faith that assures them that no matter how fierce the battle, the victory is already won. The story of the Philippines, like the unfolding revelations of the Bible, is a testament to hope amidst warfare. The battle rages on, but so does the spirit of the Filipino people. Remember, if you're finding value in this video, we appreciate your support through subscribing and liking. Now let's continue our journey. Unearth more revelations, understand the unseen battles, and together let's witness how the Philippines, through its people, continues to unfold the promises of the Bible.